Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different 12 YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all it's surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you. Before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different 12 and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? Speaking of coming to learn about your girl, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, which is a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So getting right into it. It's Wednesday, hump day. We're halfway through this week, uh, the last full week of July. So want to end it out right you guys know on Wednesdays we do our podcast content and so uh, I'm dropping one of my podcast interviews I did back in June for June, Juneteenth um, with the uh, dynamic host of Mr. Deshaun Williams from the Heart Strong Podcast and so I had a really good time talking with him about Juneteenth, uh, promoting my book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift, uh, my business, Third Eye, as well as in general, overall, talking about my life story, uh, trials and tribulation, especially, you know, advocating for mental health wellness. And so, uh, without further ado, me chip chatting, you know, jaw jacking and everything, uh, let's get right into it, you guys, and check out our interview. Um, and then once we're done, we'll come back on and talk a little bit more about what's going on in Difference World, yeah? Here it is. Hello, everyone. My name is Deshaun Williams, and I am your host for Heart Strong. And today we have Different on the podcast, and I want to tell you a little bit about her. Different was born on December 15, 1990 in Houston, Texas, Fifth Ward. Overcoming homelessness and foster care, Different went on to beat the odds. She attended Sam Houston State University, where she became a member of the Beta, who, Beta Theta chapter. Y'all, please don't get mad at me if I mispronounced it. Um, uh, Phi Chi Theta. Look, I, I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was never in, in a Beta or in a sorority. Or, uh, so, Y'all can't get mad at me. Uh, she graduated and received her bachelor's degree in international business and her master's degree in entrepreneurship. She is also a Texas real estate agent. She has a love for traveling and has visited nearly 50 countries and participated in amateur kickboxing. Whew, child. Her hobbies include reading, journaling, meditating, biking, ATV riding, zip lining and hanging out with her best friends and her nephew so without further ado i would like to introduce you to different what's going on mr deshaun what's That's going on mr deshaun thank you so much for having me shout welcome. out to everybody out there watching uh, happy to be here on the hot strong podcast Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T, and uh, first off, I must apologize, I'm a little stuffed up. I woke up this morning with allergies kicked in, full blast. Um, it's the summertime, so I have a little summer cold, but in any case, I'm happy to be here, share my story, testimony with you guys. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction, Deshaun, that was wonderful. I'm happy to be here. Let's get it. Yeah, so my first question to you would be if you don't mind sharing your story with the audience because you know we heard that you overcame homelessness and foster care what is the story behind that well and <laughs> joked about just a few seconds before we hit the live button but like i said i'm gonna share my story until i can't anymore i don't care who gets tired of hearing it this is my story and i'm sticking to it uh, but to give you background about myself um, like you said, I'm from Houston, Texas. This is I was born and bred. I'm 32 years old. Um, I had a good childhood up until the time I was 11 years old. That is where, you know, me and my family, we spilled on hard times. And we ended up homeless for three years to where we lived everywhere, literally from pillow to post. We slept in cars, shelters, parks, bus stops, and even at one point slept at a crack house. Um, 
and it wasn't until the age of 14 I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative and they did that and didn't tell any of my other family members where I was and for the first six months of being in care I tried my hardest to come home um, but mind you, this was in early, what, 2005, this was right before, you know, Apple, or the iPods and Apple took over, so don't really know phone numbers like that by heart, and so um, I tried to come home, but to no avail, but it wasn't until I found out through another form of foster kid that if I stayed and aged out, that the state of Texas would pay for my tuition to college, and so right then and there, a light bulb went out of my head to where I had to just choose to elevate my book smarts know by using my street smarts and so what I did was just made that decision to stay in care for the next four years and that wasn't easy in itself because I got shuffled from foster home to foster home and you know got into it with different foster kids and you know by the end of it um, I had just took on so many personalities to the point that I was asking the question of who am I um, but all of it wasn't in vain because by the time I had aged out of care I had earned a full ride to you know my college of choice, which was Sam Houston State University, and uh, going there was a blessing in itself because I had so many opportunities. I got the opportunity to travel abroad. That is where, you know, my travel book was planted. I studied at uh, Kim Young University in South Korea, and while I was over there, I got to travel to eight other different countries. Um, I also started my own student organization titled Paid For It, to where we would speak to different students at different high schools about the importance of education. And that is where my motivation speaking book was planted. That's where I would share my testimony with kids. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, but that, like I said, that is where I would share my testimony towards the end of uh, each of the just kids would come up to me and they would say hey I'm going through the same thing or I didn't know Texas was paid for my college I'm gonna go and so that is where the motivational speaking bug was planted for me um, and then I ended up graduating I got my bachelor's degree in international business I have two minors in economics and business communication as well as I later on got my master's degree in entrepreneurship I'm also a Texas real estate agent as well as a newly uh, insurance sales agent um, I've traveled all over the world, and so at the end of it, you know, God is good. But with all that being said and done, Deshaun, even though I had all those accolades and accomplishments and notches under my belt, it still didn't mean a thing, you know, if I had a lot of trauma that I had to deal with from my past that followed on with me throughout my childhood and into my adulthood, coming up from that chaotic environment to where for me, chaos was normal, and when, when I was actually taken out of that situation and placed in foster care, I was actually placed in good foster homes. Um, however, for me, it was just a shock within the culture. I never known black people to, you know, have nice homes and college degrees and good paying jobs. I never knew that that was an option for us. And so I seen, you know, being in foster care and having foster parents who were well off, black foster parents no less. Um, however. For me, I got that notion that it was just too good to be true, and me being that Sagittarius, I decided to win the ship, to go, it's time to sink the ship, and so what I would do is self-sabotage anything that, you know, I feel was too good to be true, or that it wasn't going to last, or that notion of, I got to get you before you get me, that's what I would do, and those type of, you know, character traits would follow me throughout high school and in college where I would, you know, become very off-putting and push people away to where I didn't want them to get too close to me and as like I said I graduated from college now I got all these accolades and accomplishments but I still have issues to deal with and to where it's affecting me in my career wise so um, it gets to a point later on down the road you know I'm an adult now I'm out of college I'm out of foster care I'm on my own and I'm still dealing with these issues um, and there was one incident to where it, it dwelled on me I dwelled on it for the longest to where I had a meeting with a very well uh, connected person and I purposely showed up late to that meeting because I let those negative thoughts in my head get to me telling me oh you're not going to do well you talk too fast you're too country they just take a pity out on you because you're in foster care things are like that so I, I purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth and I, I regretted it you know basically to this day and it wasn't until some time ago to where I had to look myself in the mirror and face that ugly truth and tell myself, you know, whatever I went through as a child, it wasn't my fault. It was out of my control. 
somehow, some way, as an adult, it is on me to deal with. It's so my problem to fix. And so I had to face that ugly truth and dismiss that notion that, you know, black people, we don't do therapy. And, you know, this black here, girl here took us up to therapy and got herself together or I'm continuing to get myself together. And in doing so, that is what led to me writing a book and ultimately starting my own business. So that's how I ended up here. <laughs> if you, I feel like I'm talking was it that, um, what was that turning point, so to speak, where you were like, okay, I need to stop self-sabotaging? Um, when I was look, I had, just, like I said, just looked up one day, looked in the mirror, looked at my life, you know, facing 30 years old. Although I have, like I said, I had accomplishments under my belt, but I really didn't have anything as far as setting concrete to show for myself. I, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. And that I'm sure that's going to come on later on in life. But what I was, how I was feeling in that morning, my time, right? And that time was, um, why am I not at the level that I should be? What is the problem? What is holding me back? And like I said, look at myself in the mirror. And I'm really big on prayer and meditation and then searching beyond to find no truth and reason as to why is things the way they are. And in doing so, it all reverted back to my past, to what I went through as a child, you know, what molded me into, you know, my actions. Why was I off putting? Why was I being mean and rude? Why did I sabotage the situation? So I had to go back to where it all started, which was my past and, and talking about it and healing. And although I've had, you know, sessions in the past as a child, you know, that that's court ordered, you know, it's not really something that you're doing from your heart because you want to be doing. Um, so this decision, this was made on my own. It was something that I wanted to do to, like I said, keep my mental health in check, uh, being real with myself. Um, I can see, you know, how it is a person can build up to uh, attempting or succeeding with suicide when it comes to dealing with their mental issues. And if it goes unchecked for so long, they'll go off the deep end and possibly take somebody with them. And that's, I never understood that notion that, you know, hurt people hurt people. And so realizing, you know, that I was a hurt person by the things that I was doing, I was hurting other people as well. That's what also made me Look, take a look at myself as to, you know, why I didn't have any concrete friendships or people that like to stay around me for, you know, a certain amount of time or people felt that I was annoying and off-putting. Why was it that? Or why didn't I like myself, too? Um, I, I was very self-loathing as well. I would mess things up and then, you know, keep myself for it. And so that, is, that was a breaking point for me. You know, here it is, the turn of the century for me. I'm about to be in book three you know, 30 years old, and I need to get myself together. Whatever I went through in the past, it's time to let it go right here and right now. I couldn't, you know, blame mommy and daddy and whoever else, foster mom, foster parents, what they did to say to me, I had to let it go, or at least try, at least try to, you know, work on letting it go. And it doesn't happen overnight. It, it's, it's not going to be a one quick fix thing. That's When it comes to getting your mental health in check, you have to look at it as, you know, when somebody has decided to get their health and check their physical health where they want to lose weight and they make the decision to cut off all sugar and carbs and, you know, they don't go back. And so that's just how it is when it comes to your mental health. You may have to make that full on lifetime commitment to continuously keep your mental health in check. So if you're going to do therapy, you have to be committed to it. You can't just do one little session. You have to, you know, prepare yourself to uh, be prepared to go to more than one. Even if you set yourself up for like a quarterly session, you go four times a year, you know, each quarter of the year uh, or twice a year. Um, but just know that going to therapy or keeping your mental health in check isn't going to be a one-time thing. It's going to be a full-on lifetime commitment that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. As long as you're facing trial and tribulations, you are going to have to battle and, and come up with ways to combat mental health issues and anguish. Um, I also want to take this time when it comes with me and my business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. Uh, we strive, like I said, to push for social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once, and especially when it comes to mental health, awareness, wellness. Um, I advocate heavily, and so with this message, I just want to share with everybody that's going through any type of mental anguish, including illness, uh, stress, depression, anxiety, 
uh, having anxiety, excuse me, suicidal thoughts, even bullying or, or having, you know, going through a relapse or rehab, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but do not ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. Talk with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, cutting people off, mending broken bridges, you know, even getting on medication if that is the need for you. Do it. Uh, do whatever it is that you have to keep your mental health in check and, you know, possibly keep you from going off the deep end and taking anybody with you. If you know or need these mental health resources that I'm about to share with, please feel free to share with any and everybody else. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that are on, that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us, or you guys can visit 988lifeline.org. Uh, and as well as you guys remember, although I am giving you guys these mental health resources, you have to remember it's on you to do, do your own homework and your own research, and you find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship, and you decide where to navigate the waters, not anybody else. Lastly, I want you guys to remember Whatever child and tribulation that you guys are going through at this time of your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not worth it. So therefore, it's not an option. So don't do it. Um, so that's all when it comes to as far as like with the mental health. Um, that's what it led, getting my mental health in check and keeping it in check is what led to me writing the book as well as starting my own business. Um and it, I'm not a perfect person. I, I, I'm still battling and struggling with my depression. In 2021, I had five deaths in my family back to back to back. Uh, being my mother, being the last person, she died in my arms the day after Christmas. And so um, I have to constantly work on that and keep my mental health in check. And a part of doing that is sharing my testimony and talking about it and keeping her memory alive. And so. You guys are not alone. Um, I'm not alone, and we're in this together. So you guys keep fighting and keep your head up. Most definitely. And thank you for sharing those resources, um, yes, especially yes. that 9 uh, yes, That is definitely. so helpful now because, you know, when that number was, um, when I was trying to get everything passed for it, everyone was like, I can't remember the 1-800 number. It's like, we need something easier. And then the 988 number came through, and I was like, this is amazing. I also... Oh, yeah, uh, I know about heart. Right. Um, I never knew the 1-800 the number by heart. I know they made a song about it, but... Uh, um, they did? Yeah, it's a, it's a song with that number, um, and it took off. Um, and so... I also want to um, point everyone like in the uh, direction of um, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, um, also known as AFSP. They do, uh, they advocate and they do walks for uh, suicide prevention. I want to say every month or every other month, uh, you can definitely go to their website, um, AFSP.org. And if you would like to, um, if you would like to become what is a advocate or a field advocate for uh, with them, you can definitely fill out that um, form. And from there, they'll send you policies that they would like for your legislator to pass. Um, that, that's something that I actually found out about uh, last year as I'm the second year strong of being a field advocate for the state of South Carolina. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, I know that you talked about your book uh, a little bit, but would you mind sharing just um, like before we start wrapping everything up, would you mind sharing some more information about your book and how uh, and how they can get um, how they can um, buy it? Okay. Well, so first of all, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, it is available on my website, differenceworld.net. And again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised, you guys, that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this hyper heat, 
still come on to the kitchen. Just get your little fire bucket. You'll be all right. Uh, that's the point of it all, you guys. <laughs> to you guys to come to the kitchen, or excuse me, come to the round table and have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug. People like to turn a blind eye to. Um, the point of it all with this book is not to just, you know, piss people off, rub people the wrong way or a certain group the wrong way. It's more so uh, to, to bring forth those conversations, like I said, that need to be had to where we can talk about accountability, acknowledgement, unity, and overall systemic change. Quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. And if you ask the question, well, why did you choose the controversial route? The reason being is because I've noticed that controversy seems to be the attention getter that people run to. They love, you know, controversy. I, I noticed it online on Instagram and people post little stories, they flock to it. And so I've set it up in a controversial manner, but it's more than it to that. Um, and I've also set it up in four different paradigms, historical, political, president and hypothetical and with each of these paradigms i'm talking about controversial deaths and events that have occurred within the african-american community and that have happened in america and so um like i said this book again be advised it's insensitive content it's intended for mature audience only um it's available on my website differenceworld.net um as well as with my youtube channel i like to uh, direct all the traffic to my youtube channel you guys with my business, Third Eye, we're more than just one option. We do it all. We talk about other issues, including, you know, social awareness, you know, equality, um, suicide prevention, you know, depression. Uh, this month is a month of pride, and so we're doing something in honor of the LGBTQ community, um, and so on and so forth. So that's why, again, I encourage you all to go to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and you come and learn about your girl. That's, you know, my tagline, come and learn. Um, I also want to share, you know, with my motto, manifest, plan, and prepare, the reason being behind that and the message behind it. When I say manifest, it means removing all the doubt, the fear, the negative naysays from your mind and replacing it with faith love and affirmation and hope and knowing that whatever you're manifesting for it will come to you as far as the planning part that is where you get out get out what you're saying in your mind on paper and write it out have about you know two three plans a backup plan an exit plan can't plan for the unknown but you can't expect that it is coming to you and whatever whatever storm coming your way you will weather it and get through it as far as preparation goes when I say prepare, I mean prepare from the inside out. Uh, prepare yourself internally and externally. Fix your mental health. Go get your physical health in check. Go get your financial health in check. Go cut people off from being, you know, will. Go mend broken bridges. So that way, whatever it is that you're manifesting and planning for, when it comes to you, you can be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it like how I did when I was younger. And so... The way I approach life now is manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is that I want in life, and it's surely going to come to me. And when it does come to me, I will be prepared for it. I will know how to handle it. So I want any and everybody out there that's listening and watching this dope podcast uh, to remember and always never forget uh, when it comes to going after whatever it is that you want in life, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Um, difference world, come and learn. I, I don't want to be too much of hey, you. How do you feel society is doing when it's coming to raising awareness on mental health? I feel that we are making progress, but we have a long road to travel. There's still a long road ahead of us, but thank God where we are now is that we are finally starting to acknowledge that, you know, mental health is a real issue. It is a societal issue. It just doesn't, um, uh, residing with one culture or one race, it affects all of us, be it black, white, straight, gay, you know, tall, short, male, female, child, adult. Depression doesn't discriminate. Mental health doesn't discriminate. Um, and so when it comes to mental health, it is a universal issue that we can all relate to. So that's also one of the reasons why um, I'm an eclectic woman, if you will, and one topic doesn't work with you, I know the other one will. And I'm not trying to be funny here, but um, I've noticed that when it comes to uh, white people, <laughs> so the way to put it, I'm not a racist, I'm a realist. Um, but when it comes to the majority of white people, they are uncomfortable when it comes to talking about race. But the minute that I talk about mental health, they're all on board. So when in doubt, talk about mental health. <laughs> That'll get the conversation started, if you will.
Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, and you know, mental health used to be that conversation where everyone was like, Oh, that's such a bad word. We don't, we don't talk about that. It's like, it's what what they say. We don't talk about Bruno. Bruno was mental health. (laughs) Um, because everyone was like, we don't talk about it. Suck it up, shut up, move on. And then COVID happened. and, And I think that's when a lot of people started to wake up and be like, Oh, mental health is real and it's something that we need to discuss uh so i, I definitely thank you for uh, for coming on today and sharing uh your story with the audience and definitely. for go ahead oh no 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 i was just agreeing with what you said but uh why well, i got the mic thank you Deshaun, for having me on your show and, and allowing me to you know, come on your platform and share my story, my testimony, and promote my business and my product. I definitely appreciate the opportunity. Um, big shout out to again everybody out there listening and watching, and peace and blessings to you. And just to remind you that you know you're a king and you got a crown on your head and you're rocking it all so well. And you keep putting pressure on it next, man. I, I feel good things coming your way. So thank you again for the opportunity. You're, you're welcome, and um, the pleasure is definitely all mine for having. Uh, you on the podcast uh, for everyone that don't know um, I'm gonna just share this little story so I'm part of a Facebook um, me and different are part of a Facebook group called uh, need a guest and uh, I just happened to see her post one day and I was like oh I'm looking for guests for season two of the podcast and time I saw it I, I messaged her it was I knew that I could not pass up on the opportunity there was part of me that said, yeah, she'll be a good guest. And then there was part of me just like, but what if she hits on a topic that is too hard for others to handle? And then that part of me that's like, she'll be a good guest. That's what we need. We need mm-hmm. someone that will be able to hit on those topics that other people are too afraid to talk about. Because if you're afraid to talk about it, that means that you probably haven't worked your way all the way through it. So now you need to figure out how you can be able to work through it. Now, with that being said, my name is Deshaun Williams and I am your host for HeartStrong. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and share it with your friends. And remember, don't just be strong, be HeartStrong. This is not goodbye, but this is until next time. Thank you. All right, you guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that, in, uh, excuse me, listening to my audio interview I did with the Heartstrong Podcast, uh, the host, Deshaun Williams. You guys, be sure to check his podcast out on Spotify platform and uh, definitely share after you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. As you guys seen, uh, we had a, a good conversation talking about mental health. Uh, moving on and healing from your past, uh, which is important when it comes to mental health, uh, as well as just talking about, you know, uh, Juneteenth. That's the time that we did the interview, and so uh, that's what the topic was uh, subject around. So, again, if you guys liked our interview and you want to see more of my podcast interviews, be sure by showing me, by liking, sharing, commenting, and definitely, you guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming, you guys. As well as, don't forget, you guys can check out my website, differenceworld.net, and you can look at all my other social media handles, including my Instagram, my Twitter, um, my TikTok, etc., etc. <laughs> uh, also, you guys, don't forget, anybody looking for motivation speakers, uh, would like me to be a part of any grassroots conversations or any podcast collaborations, get at your girl at my website. I am free of charge as of now. Again, just go to my website, differenceworld.net, and you book your girl there, yeah? Lastly, don't forget you guys on my website as well. My book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available for you to get your copy, so be sure to copy it. Again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat... Still come on to the kitchen. Just get your little fire blanket. You'll be okay. That's the point of it all, you guys, is to have the conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug, that are turned a blind eye to. Um, uh, this book is, you know, written 
to get your attentions in the most uncomfortable way, if you will. I just, so I chose the controversial route because it seems to me that, you know, controversy gets a lot of attention. And so now that I have your attention, listen up. You, those will see it's not just about, you know, pissing off one certain group or, you know, dredging up the past. It's more so about coming together, talking about healing, unity, accountability, acknowledgement, uh, as well as, you know, creating ways, uh, coming up with ways that we can create systemic change for the next generation. And so, again, uh, go to my website, differencewell.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And if you already do have your copy, again, I appreciate all the love and support. Don't forget to leave me a review on Amazon, uh, or wherever you can. Uh, I know Google, um, my website, as well as, you know, Facebook, Instagram. I appreciate all the love and support again. Please keep it coming and don't stop. <laughs> all right, you guys. And so um, with that being said, we're going to move right along uh, with a different train. What else we got coming up, you guys? Tomorrow is Thursday, so I haven't dropped the movie review in a while. And so me and my nephew will be back with that one. So be on the lookout. That's, again, why you guys got to hit that notification bell. So when I drop the content, you guys get notified. And you come into different world and you come and learn what's going on. Yeah? So, again, hit that notification bell for your girl. Um, what else we got, you guys? Our mental health check uh, for those out there, including myself, that may need it, that are going through any type of mental anguish or stress or illness, including depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks, even dealing with bullying or, you know, drug relapse. Please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, be it talking with a family member, a therapist, a friend, picking up a new hobby, cutting people off, mending broken bridges, even getting on medication if that's what you need to do. Do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255. Or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer, you guys can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988lifeline.org. Or those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, uh, you guys can check out incounseling.com. Again, incounseling is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, you have to remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide whether to navigate the waters. Nobody else but you. Lastly, you guys, when it comes to mental health, I want you guys to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time of your life, you have to remember that this too shall pass, so therefore you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option, so it's not worth it, so don't do it, okay? And so, and close out of the mental health uh, check, just remember to keep your mental health in check uh, by constantly keeping it uh, maintained as well as doing whatever it is that you have to do to keep yourself from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you, okay? So, moving on and closing it out in some positive note. Uh, again, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with, again, the Headstrong Podcast. Again, big shout out to Deshaun uh, Williams for having me. And again, check him out on Spotify. I uh, appreciate all the love and support. Again, don't forget... Hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe button uh, for your girl. And uh, remember, whatever it is in life that you guys are feeling that you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Difference well. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? 
What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustrations? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.